Hello, friends. You know, Matthew, in recording Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, in chapter 5 and verse 33 uh, down through uh, verse 37, has this to say concerning uh, taking oaths. Again, you have heard that it hath been said by them of old time, Thou shalt not forswear thyself but shall perform unto the Lord thine oaths. But I say unto you, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, nor by earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king, neither shall ye swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. But let your communication be yea, yea, Nay, nay, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. <laughs> Hello, friends. I am Bishop Jerry Hayes. I am the Abbot General of the Apostolic Disciples of the Way. And you are watching episode number 56 of the Bible, verse by verse. Before we get to these particular passages... And uh, even before we pray, I, I want to just make mention of this book on water baptism. We don't often uh, give uh, commercials on the Bible verse by verse, but sometimes we do. Uh, this is a book that the Lord enabled me to write uh, some months ago on the subject of water baptism. Now, you can purchase this book from Amazon.com forward slash books, and then just in the search window, put in the name of the book, Water Baptism by Bishop Jerry Hayes, or just Bishop Jerry Hayes, and then my entire bookshelf would come up. We have about 14 books there for you to uh, pick from. They're all on theology. None of them are fluff. None of them are self-help books. I've just got to tell you that before you go there. They are theology and they're teaching Bible doctrine. Uh, so I wanted to let you know, this book mostly is a Q&A. That's the heart of the book. Uh, there are 70 questions and answers on water baptism. And then I deal with about, I think it's 13 different uh, baptismal passages from the Word of God. Uh, Matthew 28, 19 has been challenged uh, in academia in the last hundred years uh, in uh, textual criticism as uh, not being the actual words of Jesus. Go ye therefore into all the world and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We have an entire chapter in the book concerning that passage. Amazon.com forward slash books. Uh, Bishop Jerry Hayes and my whole bookshelf comes up and you'll see other books there, but this is the one that we want to emphasize today. God bless you. Now, uh, as you go there and look at these books, now let us go uh, to the God of the Word before we go to the Word of God. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we ask that you would illumine all in us that is darkness, anoint our minds, anoint our hearts, and anoint our lips, that we might perceive, that we might believe, and that we might speak with confidence your word in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. So let's go right to the word of the Lord today, and we're going to uh, Matthew chapter 5, verses 33 through 37. Again, you have heard that hath been said by them of old time, or you have heard that it has been said by the ancients, literally is what the Greek is saying, that thou shalt not forswear thyself, but shalt perform unto the Lord thine oaths. My, <laughs> how this was drilled and drilled and drilled into our heads as children, uh, but not, not in its proper context. You cannot swear, you cannot 
take an oath, we were told. Therefore, when we would have to go before a magistrate or before a court of law, and we were asked to swear, put our hands on the Bible nonetheless, and swear, well, we wouldn't do that. We would say, I affirm, but we could not use the word swear. Well, we're going to talk about this just a little while in this episode number 56. And we're going to talk about oaths and what is Jesus actually saying here about swearing an oath. Uh, Thou shalt not forswear thyself. Now, here Christ is uh, correcting another false interpretation of the law. Now, the law respecting oaths is found in two places primarily, Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 12, and Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 23. Now, by those laws, people were forbid to uh, perjure themselves or to forswear, as it is said here in the King Jimmy. That is, swear falsely. You were not to swear falsely. This is what the law said. And ye shall not swear by my name falsely. Now keep that in mind. Yahweh is saying, you shall not swear by my name falsely. Neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. And then Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 23. That which is gone out of thy lips, thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. Now, you're not to perjure yourself before God. You're not to use the name of God and swear by his name and then not do it. You are to do what you say that you're going to do. You are to perform what you have said unto the Lord, meaning perform literally, uh, really, and religiously what is promised in an oath. Now, that's what the law says. And when it talks about oaths, it means an oath. Uh, an oath is something that is solemnly affirmed or declared to be done. An oath is a solemn affirmation or declaration made with an appeal to God for the truth of what is affirmed. Uh, if you promise something or, or make an oath of something and say, by God, I promise this. And this is where that sling uh, phrase comes from that uh, we had our mouths washed out with soap if we said, by God, and, and rightly so. Uh, so when uh, uh, those of the ancient times made a promise and they invoked the name of God, what they were doing is they were imprecating, invoking God's vengeance and renouncing his favor if what is affirmed is false are not done. A false oath is called perjury, or as in this place, forswearing. Now, but this is what Jesus says, swear not at all. Now, look what he says, swear not at all, neither by heaven, for it is God's throne, neither by the earth, for it is his footstool, neither by Jerusalem, for it is the city of their great king, neither shalt thou swear by thy head, because thou canst not make one hair white or black. Now, in order to understand what Jesus is saying here, you have to look at the things that he, uh, uh, the, the list that he gave. You weren't to swear by heaven. You weren't to swear by God's throne. You weren't to swear by the earth. Uh, for it was his footstool, nor by the city of Jerusalem, which is uh, the idea here is you, weren't, you were not to swear by the temple. Now, it appears from this passage, as well as from the ancient writings of the Jewish rabbis, that while the Jews professedly adhered to the law, they had engineered and developed and introduced 
a number of oaths that they that they spouted out in common conversation and oaths which they by no means considered to be binding on themselves. Now, this is what Jesus is saying we are not to do because we find that he did uh, use an oath in the temple and the apostles swore by God. So Jesus is not here putting a uh, prohibition on swearing, but he's putting a prohibition on swearing frivolously. Because, for example, the people would swear by the temple. Uh, They would swear by the head, by heaven, by the earth, by the city of Jerusalem. Uh, So long as they kept from swearing by the name of Yahweh. And so long as they observed the oaths that they had publicly taken, they seemed to consider the others as allowable and allowedly broken. And this is what Jesus is getting at. Now, this is the abuse which Christ wishes to correct. It's the practice of swearing in common conversation and especially swearing by things that are created. And people would do that. They would swear by the created things to avoid by swearing by God. And if they could avoid swearing by God, then the other things they swore by the things that he created, well, they did not consider those binding oaths. Now, uh, he said that they were mistaken in their views of the sacredness of such oaths. They were very closely connected with God because they were part of of his creation. And to uh, trifle with them was a species of trifling with God. That's what Jesus is saying. Heaven is his throne. So if you think that you can swear by heaven and just because you did not invoke the name of God, that's not a binding oath. He said, you're mistaken. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his footstool. Jerusalem, his special abode. The head was made by him and was so much under his control that we could not make one hair white or black. So to swear by these things, therefore, was to treat irreverently the objects created by God and could not be without guilt if they were broken. Now, it's remarkable that the sin here condemned by the Savior still prevails today. You hear people all the time uh, use the very same sort of oaths that were mentioned here and condemned by our Lord. They swear by their head. They swear by their life. On my life, I promise you here. They swear by heaven. By heaven, that is true. They swear by the temple or or what's taken its place, the church. They swear by their mother's grave. They swear on their children. People just... and, And these oaths, they never take them seriously nor intend for them to be binding. And the forms of cursing and swearing, however, are almost infinite and fall on the pained ears all day long. And Jesus says, don't do that. Don't do that at all. Let your communication be yea, yea, nay, nay. For whatsoever is more than these cometh from evil or comes out of an evil heart. Now, what he means by this, there are two yeas and there are two nays. There are two yeses and there are two noes. So, uh, and they are couplings. So, let your communication be yea, yea. In other words, if you promise yes, let the execution be yes. If you uh, swear no, then let the truth of your swearing be no. So one is the promise, one is the execution. Uh, One is the oath and one is the reality. If you say yes, then it better be yes. If you say no, then it better be no. For whatsoever is more than these comes after an evil heart. You're not to say yea, no, 
and you're not to say, nay, yes. In other words, you're not to say, yes, I will do such and such, and then no, don't do it. You're not to say, no, I did not do such and such, or I will not do such and such, and then actually have done it, or actually go ahead and perform it. You see, if men were not uh, uh, allowed righteously to swear an oath before the magistrates, before law, then we would have no way of settling uh, wrongs uh, or settling feuds. And that's true between individuals, and it's also true between nations. So our Savior here evidently had no reference to judicial oaths or oaths taken in a court of justice. It was merely the foolish and the wicked habit of swearing in private conversations about everything under the sun, of swearing on every occasion and by everything that was what he was condemning. Now, this he does condemn, however, in a most unqualified manner. Now, we can say this because Jesus himself did not refuse to take an oath in a court of law. You say, well, Bishop Hayes, when, he when did he do that? In Matthew chapter 26, verses 63 through 64, this is what we read. But Jesus held his peace. This was when he was before his judges. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure thee by the living God that thou tell us whether thou be the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man setting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. Now, Jesus refused to answer the high priest until the high priest invoked God in the matter. So in this, in this invoking of God, it, it, Jesus then, uh, in effect, took the, this oath in the court of law. And also, Paul often called God to witness his sincerity, uh, which is all that is meant by an oath. Now, we should live as Christians so that our yes will be believed as a yes, that our no will be believed as a no without having to swear to it. But the condition of men and, and the reality of life is not that way. That's why we have to swear. That's why we have to make take oaths. That's why we have to sign our name uh, to covenant uh, in order to make uh, contracts when we borrow money or things of this nature. Uh, and this is not what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about the, the frivolous swearing in, by everything under heaven and for every cause when you don't really intend for it to be binding. Romans chapter 1 and verse 9, we read about the Apostle Paul. For God is my witness. Now here Paul is taking an oath. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. He is saying God is my witness. By God as my witness I tell you I'm always praying for you. And then in Romans chapter 9 and verse 1 we see again. I say the truth in Christ, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost. So Paul swears by Christ and the Holy Spirit. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 20. Now the things which I write unto you, behold, before God, I lie not. I almost see him saying, before God with my hand up, <laughs> I lie not. So Taking an oath is not what Jesus is talking about in the, in the realm of uh, the sincerity of the matter. 
What he's condemning is swearing by your head, swearing by the earth, swearing by heaven, swearing by Jerusalem, swearing by the temple, swearing on your mother's grave. All the swearing that people do to avoid swearing by God because they don't intend to keep the oath anyway. And if they have avoided using the name of Yahweh, then they feel that it's allowable to break the oath. That's what Jesus is condemning. And then in Hebrews chapter 6 and verse 16, For men verily swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them an end of all strife. Now, that's the crux of the matter right there. If... uh Laban and, and, and Jacob could not make the covenant and could not swear by the swear by God, the Lord watch between me and thee. Uh, in church sometimes we uh, use that that saying of Laban, uh, the Lord watch between me and thee while we are apart from one another. Uh, they are calling on God to witness their oath, uh, of treaty uh, of a treaty of peace and uh, they have just made a covenant and Laban says the Lord be the witness of this agreement that I do not cross over this boundary line to do you harm and you do not cross over this boundary line to do me harm we really don't know the con we really don't think of the context of that oath when we say it in church as we are dismissing the congregation, the Lord watched between me and thee while we are absent one from another. This was an oath taken in a peace treaty. The Lord watch and hold us accountable for our agreement to do each other no harm. <laughs> Amen. And without them, without them, that we don't have an end of strife. So they are important. Oaths were moreover prescribed in the law of Moses. And Christ, now get this beloved, Christ did not come to repeal or abrogate those laws. He just came to teach the proper observation of them. Can we pray? Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We ask these things in the name of Jesus in whom is the father who made us the son who saved us in the Holy Ghost that sanctifies us. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, my friends. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.